If you look at the maps of every Dragon Quest world, you'll notice some interesting similarities. Obviously, the first three Dragon Quests take place in the same world. They are an explicit trilogy, but so are the next three, and knowing the plot of Dragon Quest VII and how Dragon Quest VIII connects back to the third Dragon Quest causes more and more dots to take shape. Eight's Tree of Sticks can be extrapolated to grow into Nine's Yggdrasil, which is easily Eleven's Yggdrasil, which brings us all the way back to Dragon Quest III. It's fun to connect these dots and entertain the possibility of every Dragon Quest secretly taking place on the same planet. This was a rabbit hole I dove into on Twitter a couple of years ago in a frantic combination of caffeine, adrenaline, and finally being asked the question I'd been dying to answer. But none of it is necessarily accurate. Nothing in Dragon Quest explicitly verifies these claims. Subscribers to the theory are attracted to the idea of it being true because there's enjoyment to derive from thinking we see the person behind the curtain, but only the idea. If you told me the creator of Dragon Quest, Yuji Hori, had at some point confirmed Dragon Quest all took place in the same landscape, I'd probably make a face to myself or say, cool, and never talk about it ever again. The question you likely have, despite maybe feeling the same way, is why? Why would it be infinitely less interesting if this fan theory was made real? Well, human beings are pre-programmed to find patterns in all things. We love connecting those dots, finding shapes and faces and clouds and inanimate objects. We love to sort data until it makes sense to us. From this instinctual behavior is where modes of our subjectivity originate. It's inevitable for the people ingesting media to crave explanations for plot holes and inconsistencies. If we can't follow along or see what's being gotten at, we lose interest or become unimpressed by the work's attempt. When patterns are difficult to identify, stories stop making sense, character motivations can become confusing, and plot twists can fall flat. This is a very short and huge reduction of the conversation around subjectivity, but I hope you're understanding me. Our way of identifying patterns is intrinsically unique to us, and a great deal of our subjectivity lies in it both when creating and when being an audience member. It's the place from which headcanons and fan theories are born. It doesn't matter if details are only secret for a short time. I once made a fan theory about Fallout 4 in the five month space between it being announced and released because all we could do at the time was speculate. I was, unfortunately, let down by the reality of Fallout 4's central plot and learned a hard, fast lesson about speculation. The truth is boring. There's something to be said about the power of speculation when it comes to world building. Having gaps in your world is important because it allows the player to participate in its existence. When details are left ambiguous, people are bound to fill in those gaps themselves. They'll make inferences based on context clues or become curious enough to search for more information which further immerses them into the space. By providing room for speculation, every version of this world is slightly different to whomever plays inside it. If you've ever GM'd a tabletop RPG, surely this is familiar to you. You could have thousands of notes about a city or NPC you've created, and you'd never give all the details away to one of your players because you want them to wonder. You want them to come to their own conclusions about whether or not two characters are in cahoots. Sometimes you'll ignore what's in your notes entirely because the nondescript boxes you mentioned for nothing more than background setting are now being checked for traps and sussed out for secret meaning. You'll throw out an entire character's personality because the way the group is interacting with them is so hilarious or entertaining for the whole table, you're gonna let it ride. Speculating about lore is pivotal to the health of world building because a world without unanswered questions has no desire to be explored. Unanswered is a key word here. Being able to speculate or remain guessing about certain details is additive to an experience overall. And I can make the argument being able to find all the answers is subtractive. What's known becomes mundane, but what remains a mystery is always a second chance to learn something new or see it differently. When we think about good speculation in world building, it's impossible not to include Dark Souls. The world of Dark Souls is built on a lack of information. 
Plot details are scarce, characters are short on words, and the only way to learn about where you are is to find items with short descriptions mentioning a fraction of the world's history. But do a search for Dark Souls Lore Explained and you'll see a deeper conversation than what I just described would imply exists. You'll find truth seekers, lengthy debates on the origins of a boss character, and people attempting to piece together the significance of an ending. Dark Souls intentionally fosters a community searching for answers within a world meant to be explored and investigated. Ten years after its release, people are still coming to new conclusions or revisiting the game to challenge accepted theories. But through the discussion, the world comes alive. Because they've never been given a straight answer, the community continues to think and share and engross themselves in Dark Souls. It can be as deep as they want it to be or as shallow as they want it to be. When I think about worlds without speculation, worlds which can be interesting for other reasons but have lost my interest the more I learn about them, I think about the Elder Scrolls and Fallout. I'm pausing here to acknowledge I have lost most of you by saying this. The quality of lore and general world building of Bethesda games has declined because they are shallow. I don't think they were stupendous to begin with because they never cared much for maintaining speculation in the first place. Bethesda worlds have their entire histories, cultures, and important figures more or less spelled out for you. The information is somewhere, and digging for it doesn't get you very deep before you find the answer. It makes up for the lack of depth by being extensive. You'll rarely learn everything about Skyrim the first time you play it, but although the world is built around exploration, the novelty of learning the answer to your lore question is gratifying once, the first time you learn it. Lore hits dead ends when there's definitive answers, and starts to contradict itself too. There's so much information in Bethesda worlds, people eventually started to notice conflicts within them. Facts about the Brotherhood of Steel in Fallout 76 don't hold up well against prior pillars of world building in Fallout, for example. With as much information as those games get packed with, things are bound to get retconned, removed, or completely ignored by the people designing them. It's not feasible to fact check your cool story idea against an encyclopedic amount of lore, and the top priority for these games is doing pulpy science or epic fantasy things within a story, not worrying so much about how they interact with one another. This is why I'm confused about the amount of effort which is going into painfully explaining everything about anything in game. A lot of it doesn't matter. A lot of it doesn't come back around to us in meaningful ways, it's just there. Interesting, maybe. A curiosity or need to know, sure, but distracting and or obfuscating actual storytelling? Absolutely. At some point, world building became more important than what it's supposed to be in service to. Easter eggs aren't Easter eggs anymore, they are the key to connect universes together. References are now picked apart to tie two unrelated characters into lifetime bonds. More and more, the details of a world have become more important than the stories being told in them. I'm kind of tired of information in games being handed to me without a plum. I think it's becoming popular to build worlds and knowledge of them off the idea more is always better. Like background details of something are more interesting than the forward-facing elements. There's a trend to care more about trivia which should be contributing to a greater tapestry but doesn't. We want to connect these dots to make things correlate, but we don't care about the causation. We don't care how connecting these dots contributes to core themes or mechanics, or at least stop short of doing so. It's fun, but it's taking the place of more thoughtful discussion, and it really shouldn't be at the center of building worlds or talking about them. Kingdom Hearts. I feel like I could stop here and everyone will know where I'm going with this. Like we could just have the follow-up conversation in the comments without me saying anything else. I'm gonna say it anyway. Kingdom Hearts is an example of lore replacing narrative. Over time, the series focused less on delivering cohesive storytelling and cared more about explaining away every possible question players could have answered for themselves. Every new entry adds another MacGuffin, another set of mysterious strangers, another twist or new mystery just to bait an audience with trailer fodder. Rather than these introductions happening organically, they're more likely the result of a well-running dry, or at least a very odd decision to rewrite and re-explain existing details even when they would have been stronger left unexplained. 
Kingdom Hearts is obsessed with its own explanations. I think worse than basing your entire storytelling structure purely on reveals and trinkets of curiosity is constantly changing the rules of your world and the identities of your characters in order to generate short-lived questions you're going to answer before anyone else gets the chance to. At no point does the audience have any sort of agency in your world or your story. Things happen, and they are expected to be grateful for knowing things happened, whether or not those answers are satisfying or needed. Every time the industry has indulged speculation and dipped into putting lore over important world building, the Zelda timeline comes to mind. The Zelda timeline is a living embodiment of bad speculation, bad fan service pandering to speculation, and a creator realizing their error in removing speculative space. It had taken over conversations in the fanbase. People were obsessed with solving which game took place when in respect to everything else, with Ocarina of Time being at the center of the issue because it split a linear path into multiple timelines. As it continued to dominate social spaces revolving around Legend of Zelda, the community was getting progressively exhausted. Okay, there's a timeline. So what? Who cares about the timeline? What does the timeline have to do with anything? Nintendo, wanting to appease both the lore hounds and the people who were tired of the conversation, released an official version of the timeline in the Zelda Historia, and all hell broke loose. Conversation went from, does it exist? To, why did Nintendo get it wrong? What was meant to end a tired debate sparked an entirely new one and further pushed discussion about The Legend of Zelda further and further into what was ultimately superficial theory crafting. The Zelda timeline was also a clever marketing ploy for Skyward Sword, a game conveniently being designed and pushed as the first Legend of Zelda in the history of Legend of Zeldas and promised to detail the origins of the timeline. Rather than conversation being about the emotional impact of Skyward Sword or how common themes were being explored in this entry, the internet and Skyward Sword instead focused on connecting dots. How does this relate to Ganon? Where is the Master Sword? What kind of humanoid are the Zoras this time? Not only was this speculation not in service to its narrative, it superseded it entirely. Realizing how distracting the timeline and making sense of the world of Zelda had become, as well as how difficult it would be to continue on this path for future Zelda games, Nintendo intentionally left Breath of the Wild's placement in the timeline ambiguous. They pumped it full of references to older games from all over the timeline to further weaken the timeline's importance to the series. In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Creating a Champion book, Eiji Aonuma, the father of The Legend of Zelda, writes, We realized that people were enjoying imagining the story that emerged from the fragmentary imagery we were providing. If we defined a restricted timeline, then there would be a definitive story and it would eliminate the room for imagination, which wouldn't be as fun. But have you seen what most content about Breath of the Wild is? It's all theory crafting and trying to place the game somewhere. There's a ton of videos out there trying to piece together who specific characters secretly are or connecting geographical areas together. The Legend of Zelda was permanently damaged when its world building stopped being about the legend each game was telling and more about how those legends related to one another. But at the very least, Breath of the Wild brought back meaningful speculation. It was a story about not having all the information, and getting it through exploration and having to make conclusions for yourself about its characters. Were they naive? Were they arrogant? Have they learned a lesson? Breath of the Wild brought back wonder to the world of Zelda by realizing the strength of speculation lies in how the gaps can tell a story. In Dark Souls, speculation is used to determine the honesty of a specific character or understand an enemy we're facing. Are Frampt and Kath truly at odds or are they working together to perpetuate a cycle? Is igniting the flame at the end of the game the right thing to do or does letting the Age of Fire die out usher in something better? Do you feel bad for Gwyn or Gwendolyn or the Bed of Chaos or is their cause unjust? Because the gaps are about the story being told, the conclusions we come to influence our decisions. We can play Dark Souls many times over, and we may feel differently each time about what it is we're doing or who we let live. And Dark Souls, knowing the speculation is being had, will respond in kind. If we trust Lautrec, we lose a Firekeeper, and our story now incorporates revenge. If we befriend Solaire and Siegmeier, our solitary quest becomes a jubile adventure with comrades ones we can lose along the way. The speculation we do directly impacts our interactions. The world building facilitates thinking about the story, and the lack of clarity means the experience is timeless. 
it changes with you. In The Elder Scrolls, speculation rarely exists for long because of how hungry it is to give you info, and rarely does it feed back into the story you're participating in. The history of the Blades, knowing all the Daedra, or knowing Shiogorath is actually the Oblivion player character when you meet them in Skyrim, details like this don't actually impact the central narrative. They rarely affect a choice you have to make or inform a character's actions in the story. They're anecdotal, interesting in their own right, but overall superficial to what's going on. And in cases like The Legend of Zelda's timeline, speculation designed to focus on auxiliary details takes away from the story being told. We're missing the forest for the trees. We're putting all this emphasis on information which doesn't matter, and the industry continues to pander to it. The gaps are being filled in for us. We're slowly being pushed out of the world building process and our agency within those worlds is going to suffer. I'm not saying we should stop encouraging people to care about the background details. I just think we shouldn't forget it's the lack of detail that makes it so special. I don't think game developers should forget they're essentially game masters who would benefit from leaving us out of information. I don't want us to care less about these worlds. I just don't want us to lose the plot.